Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing? Man, it's here. Hey, what's going on, guys? How we doing? Man, it's here. So, I just got an email from John, and he had an article in it. And it was about the rapid decline of Matt Antonelli, of me. And uh, not video game Matt, real Matt. And so back, if you guys have followed my channel, we've made a couple other videos on this. What happened to my career? How was it that I went through the minor leagues so fast, got to the major leagues, and then forgot how to hit and never got back to the big leagues ever again? So we've talked about this in a few other videos. But this is an interesting article. And during this time when I was really struggling... I struggled in the big leagues. I struggled the season that I got called up to the big leagues in AAA. And then I struggled in the big leagues. Then I struggled the next year. And people were trying to figure out what the hell is going on with this guy. I, at one point, was considered a top prospect. I was number one second base prospect uh, in baseball. And, uh, and then, pfft, and I don't know what happened. Well, I mean, I know what happened. Um, but let's check out this article. And we're going to hit on some points on this. Because I remember reading this article. I do remember reading this a long time ago. And they bring up some interesting points. So I want to go through the article and I want to give my perspective on everything um, and just chat. And then let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. Okay, so the rapid decline of Matt Antonelli. This was written in 2009, July 24th by the Hardball Times. So let's go through this real quick because I remember this coming out when I was playing. It says, from 2006 to 2007, Matt Antonelli appeared to be on the fast track to the major leagues. Antonelli, a former first-round pick out of Wake Forest, was dubbed the Padres' second baseman of the future and top second base prospect in all of baseball by several publications. His outstanding athleticism, he was Massachusetts Player of the Year in football and hockey in high school. That is a lie. I was the football player of the year in football, not in hockey. That's a rumor. Uh, combined with his plate discipline and advanced hitting approach made him one of the fastest rising stars in the minor leagues. In 2007, he had 304, 402, 477 between high and double A. If you don't know what that means, it's just a 301 average, 402 on base percentage, and uh, 477 slugging percentage. Between high and double A, having had such success in the lower rungs of the minors, San Diego moved him up to triple A in 2008. Okay. But, uh oh, here comes the big but. Never good when. A sentence starts with but. But during that season, Antonelli hit a wall. He saw his average plummet to 215. Ugh. Um, and just to give you guys an idea, this is the first time I ever probably hit below, basically below 300 in my life. My first year of short season ball, I hit 290-ish, 286 or 290 or something. It wasn't a whole lot of games. Um, but this obviously is way below. His batting average on balls in play, BABIP, fell from 335 to 251. Now, a lot of people were writing about this back in the time. They kept saying, they first started saying, oh, he's having bad luck, a lot of bad luck. His balls just aren't falling in, right? Babbitt, balls, batting average on balls in play has taken such a downfall. And, uh, you know, that'll come back. What do they call it? Regressing to the mean or something like that? I'm not smart enough to figure that out. But they said, oh, that'll come back. It's just temporary. He's having bad luck. He must be lining out a lot. Um, he saw his home run output dwindle from 21 in 2007 to 7 in 2008. Now, people also were like, oh, California League, that's why he hit 21, but Pacific Coast League, he only hit 7. It's the leagues. Well, the Pacific Coast League is a really good hitter's league also. So, um, again, in my opinion, that wasn't it. We'll talk about what, I, what it was in a minute. Nevertheless, the Padres promoted him, perhaps in hopes of jump starting a season for a brief cameo in the major leagues, or in the big leagues. Antonelli struggled in the 65 plate appearances, hitting 193. Okay, so... The reason they sent me up, and if you guys have seen my other videos, uh, you probably know this already. I was, you know, I couldn't hit to save my life, right? 215 is what I hit that year, but I actually was hitting like 160 something at one point. And then I changed my swing late in the year. I really worked on it with Sean Wooten, who is a, a player on my team. Now he's a, he's been a big league hitting coach. Um, but we worked on a lot of things to try to get me back to what I was doing in single A. He was the only coach that could really help me try to regain some of that form and I ended up hitting over 300 my last month I think it was of AAA and that's when I got called up now they called me up and they said listen I know you know you've been doing better lately but we want to get the big league coaches to see you we want them to be able to work with you we want to really use this time in the big leagues don't worry about your stats don't worry about how things go just worry about listening basically listen to us and we're going to get your swing back feeling good even though it already was kind of feeling good because <laughs> I'd worked on it for a while and finally started to figure things out. 
Um, that's the only thing that frustrates me a little bit about my big league stats is that they told me, don't worry about your stats. We're going to change your swing. You know, we're going to try it out in games. And if you don't hit well, don't worry about it. And the only thing that frustrates me is those numbers, they do matter. They go on the back of your baseball card and they go down under your name and other teams are going to look at that. And other teams don't know that I was just trying things and they said, don't worry about stats. So everyone refers to my big league stats and like, oh, look, you couldn't even, you couldn't hit in the major leagues. Well, I didn't, but nobody really knows exactly what was happening during those times. Nobody knows that they changed my swing unless you follow my channel. Nobody knows that they said, don't worry about your stats. They don't matter. Of course they do matter. Okay. This season has been much of the same. Back in AAA after missing six weeks with a leg injury. Um, I ended up hurting my knee. Antonio's batting 188, 295, and 339. So uh, his Babbitt has dipped to 197. So I ended up getting hurt. Couldn't hit for a while. Um, I also had my hand thing going on at this time. So this was just a disastrous time for me. I wasn't getting consistent time. I was injured. And my swing still wasn't back to normal. I kind of... Again, when I went to the big leagues, they kind of changed me from doing, <laughs> it's a weird thing. In 2008, I was struggling because my swing was terrible. Then I started figuring my, figuring my swing out. Then I got called up and changed my swing again to a leg kick and all this other stuff. So then when the season started, I was kind of back into not feeling very comfortable. It was just a bad cycle. Interestingly, Antonio's plate discipline remains consistent. His solid walk rate this year, 12.2%, and strikeout rate, 14.5%, are right in line with his minor league career averages. He has maintained a strikeout-to-walk ratio near one his entire career. So um, here, this is where it gets interesting. So what could, be, what could possibly explain the sudden drop in performance? Well, for one, his ground balls and line drives are down, and his fly balls and pop-ups have risen. In 2007, his ground ball rate was 43.2%. His line drive rate was 16.7%. His fly ball rate was 40% and his infill fly ball rate was 14.3%. Fast forward to 2008, his percentages are 37.8, 15.1, 47.0, and 23.9. These percentages are virtually identical to his 2009 campaign as well. More fly balls and pop-ups mean more easy outs and a lower BABIP. Below is a simple chart I made of Antonelli's batted ball data through his minor league career. All right, so here's the chart right here. Basically, I'm hitting way more balls in the air. I'm hitting way more infill pop-ups. And so here's where people didn't understand what was going on. I kept hearing this also. Could it also, could it also be possible that Antonelli's home park in the Pacific League deflates offensive production that much? No, not likely. I already talked about that. Um, so he, uh, he takes, or I'll just read it. I was able to figure out his batting line with park factors neutralized. Even with this, he would only be hitting 205, 309, and 355 this season. Neutralizing luck still only yields 253, 351, and 434. A far cry from his early performance. So it appears neither of these two factors are playing a major role in his performance of late. Whatever the case may be, it's obvious that something is wrong with Antonelli. As he is nowhere near the player he once was, perhaps it's a mechanical issue that can be corrected with time. Although he's just 24 years old, Antonelli's career seems to be in free fall. If he cannot change what made him such a successful player, he could be out of a job in a few years. For his sake and the party's fans everywhere, I hope he can revert to his former self. Okay. So there's the article. Now, if you go down into... The comments. I don't know these people. Um, so this is what I used to get a lot from people. If I had to guess, it looks like he got a home run happy. In 2007, he actually had a relatively low fly ball percentage, 40%, but still had a bunch of home runs. In subsequent years, his fly ball percentage and infield fly ball percentage, which is which of the worst chance of being hits, each went up by 10%. To me, this would indicate that he's trying to drain extra loft with disastrous results. So basically, they say that I hit a bunch of home runs in a homer-friendly field, and then, you know, I got lucky with my home runs on fly balls, and then they took the park away, and um, then I tried to hit more home runs. See, anyway, he hit a few homers, generated some buzz, and started trying to hit more, thinking that was the fast track to the show. It hasn't worked. Okay, so that's wrong. Um, the What happened, and we've talked about this before, is that... I was not trying to hit any more fly balls. I wasn't trying to hit any more home runs. I didn't hit, try to hit, when I hit 21 home runs, I didn't try to hit home runs. I just tried to hit line drives. The next year, I tried to hit line drives again. Like that, my approach has always been hit a line drive through the middle of the field. When my swing is working well, the ball naturally, I'm gonna hit a line drive, and if I miss slightly under, I'm gonna hit a home run or a double. 
when my swing isn't working well, my bat path has changed. So what happened was my bat path started to get really steep to the ball. I started to cut down through the ball. It wasn't staying behind the ball. And so the ball kept going up to the infield because my bat path was going down through the ball too much. So you think I'm always hitting the bottom of the ball because my bat's coming down and the ball's coming down and those things aren't going to intersect. They're not going to flush up very often. And I'm going to either pound the ball on the ground or I'm going to hit. I kept hitting under the ball. I'd hit the bottom of the ball and the ball would get popped up usually to the second baseman or shallow right field. And my coach would say, stop hitting the ball in the air. Get on top of the ball. Stop swinging up so much. And so then I would try to swing down more. And then I would hit more pop-ups. And they'd say, stop popping up get on top of the ball stay on top of the ball swing down on the ball and i'd be like okay and i tried some more and i hit more pop-ups this is before i knew anything about path i didn't know anything about bat path and so in my mind they're yelling at me that i'm getting under the ball so i'm like okay i must uh, they're saying i'm swinging up on the ball too much so i gotta swing down more and it was like a vicious cycle and i just kept hitting more and more pop-ups so people think i'm trying to hit home runs this is the frustrating thing about baseball back then now i think they've got a better idea but back then, every time I hit the ball in the air, they would tell me that I'm dipping my shoulder, I'm underneath the ball, I'm blah, 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 blah. And I wasn't doing that. But that's what all the coaches were telling me. That's what players were telling me. Hey, man, stop trying to hit the ball so far. That's like the classic thing. You hit the ball up and people think you're trying to hit home runs. Stop trying to hit home runs. And I'm sitting there like, I'm not trying to hit home runs. The more I try to hit ground balls, the more I hit the ball in the air. So if you're somebody that has that issue... You got to look at your path. What's your path doing? My path was going down and to the left. We talk about it in a lot of our videos. Go check out all our videos in our hitting playlist. And the, the ball will go up and to the right. If you swing down and to the left as a righty, the ball is either going to go down and to the left, which I did. I hit a lot of ground balls to the third baseman. Or it's going to go up and to the right, which I did a ton. And so the whole Babbitt thing, balls, you know, batting average balls and play and all that stuff. Yeah, it went down because I kept popping up. Those balls are not going to be hits. It wasn't bad luck. It wasn't that I was trying to hit homers because I wasn't hitting deep fly balls. I was hitting infield pop-ups. You don't hit, in my opinion, you don't hit infield pop-ups when you're trying to hit home runs. At least I don't. I hit a lot of infield pop-ups when my bat path is really poor. It's really down. When I get my barrel behind the ball, then I'm able to drive the ball much more. And then I'll hit the ball. The ball will go in the air, but it'll go hard in the air. Um, if you're someone that loses your barrel way underneath the ball... And you, a lot of times you'll foul balls off. Foul, foul, foul. Swing and miss, swing and miss, swing and miss. That could be that you're losing your barrel. And there's other things that could be causing that. But infield pop-ups, I always felt like infield pop-ups to the opposite field. So if you're right and you're hitting pop-ups to second base and to shallow right field in the first base, you're cutting across the ball. You're down and across the ball. You're not, you have really poor direction. And that's the reason why you're popping up. And so... Again, when I played, no one ever said this to me. The only person that mentioned anything to me, well, this was Sean Wooten. He was like, dude, look at your path. It's down. It's cutting across the zone. I didn't even know what that meant. Now I talk about it to every hitter we, that I work with, but I didn't. no one ever told me that. I was in the major leagues, and no one ever told me that. They never talked to me about bat path. I had no clue. Um, and that wasn't that long ago. That was a little more than 10 years ago. So, anyways, um, John sent this video over again. Thank you for sending this video over. Uh, I do remember this, or oh, this this article, I should say. Um, I do remember this, and uh, this was a frustrating time. Okay, hopefully that was interesting for you guys. Let me know if you have any other things you want me to talk about. Obviously, right now, no baseball going on. Really strange time with no sports at all. So if you guys have any topics that you would like me to discuss, put it in the comment section below, and I will do so. Again, that's all we have. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Hit the notification bell. Thank you to our patrons out there on Patreon who help support the channel. We really, really appreciate it. And that is all we have. Don't forget to go check out MLB The Show 20. Matt is crushing people. He's about to win Rookie of the Year. Go check it out. If you don't watch video games and you don't play video games, who cares? Go over. I bet you will enjoy it. And we'll talk to you later.